part of Travis Green's initiation as an NHL head coach is this inquisition <laughs> on after hours. So this is going to be easy after an impressive win like that, and you're sitting next to a former teammate. You played with Louis DeBrusque in Phoenix. He's got the goods on you, and he's going to spill them during the program. Right, Louis? <laughs> I am. I got some goods yeah. on him. Too. Oh, yeah. I, know, I don't know how far I want to go with that because I might come back, but congratulations oh, yeah. on your first Thank NHL you. win, Travis. Uh, Well-deserved. How about that effort? That's got to be fantastic. It was. I'm proud of our guys. We've, uh, you know, we've had a hard training camp, a bit of a longer camp uh, with the trip to China. Uh, obviously, the delay but with our first start of the game. We waited a week between games. I thought we were a little rusty to start the game, but real proud of the team, how they played tonight for 60 minutes. All right, a couple of pieces of video that we want to share from tonight's game. First of all, a scrap featuring Troy Stetcher and Reinstrom. Yeah. Um, this showed some grit, did it not? It did. Well, let's talk about our team being hard to play against, playing a fast, hard game, clean game, but, you know, this is going to happen when you're competing and, you know, two guys that you don't normally see fight, but, uh, you know, Stetch is a competitor and you like to see a good tussle every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Louis had a few of them. Yeah, you know what? It's, I said the same thing, you know, you like to see that compete from a guy that's not that big, but he's going to battle for every inch. Yeah, no, it is. He's a, he's a competitive player for sure. A uh, real good defenseman, has a bright future in the, in the league. And Bo Horvat uh, almost had the hat trick tonight. Uh, clearly, he is one of the leaders, if not the leader on the team. What did you like about his effort tonight? Well, a lot. Uh, you know, first of all, he's coming back from an injury. Um, you know, to get two goals in a game like this is huge. We got the power play goal and then the strong, gritty goal around the net. It kind of, uh, you know, describes how he's going to play. He's a 200-foot player and he's going to be able to score in many different ways, and he did tonight. Hey, Travis, you're, I'm sorry, uh, Louis, just before we get back to you, not, you're not without uh, experience in running a bench. Uh, you had that year in Portland with the Winterhawks, took them to the Memorial Cup. You had four years in Utica. Um, what's the major challenge or difference, perhaps, in running an NHL bench? Or is there one? Well, there is. Uh, you know, every level you go up, I find uh, there's little nuances that are different. Uh, you know, the coaching, for starters, is a lot different as far as la line matching and trying to anticipate who's going on the ice and, and you know, it's, but you're still just coaching. I, I haven't tried to overthink it and, uh, you know, hopefully take it a step at a time. You realize it's impossible for your hair not to go a little grayer though, right? <laughs> you know, you can see I there see your that. hair was pretty dark, but the that. grays are starting yeah, to come out a little bit. Though, I see yours, yours hasn't <laughs> turned yet. <laughs> hey, a little more extra yeah, in Yeah, I know. Okay, hair <laughs> conversation, I'm out. <laughs> Let's get to the uh, really important stuff here now, Travis. A uh, few weeks into the job, can you tell the Sedins apart in street clothes? Uh, occasionally. They, they catch me off guard once in a while. One of them didn't practice the other day, Hank, and, and Daniel came into my office, and I, uh, it took me a little while to make sure it was Daniel, but uh, I'm starting to learn them, them apart. So you didn't sure. lower yourself to which one are you? <laughs> no, I haven't <laughs> yet. <laughs> Definitely haven't yet. Uh, Daniel and Henrik say when they first met with you this year, you told them, both future Hall of Famers, that they weren't good enough last season, uh, and they didn't take it the wrong way. They, they in fact, were, were almost welcomed the comment. What does that say about your coaching style? Uh, you know, I'd like to like players to think that I'm, I'm an honest coach. I'm going to tell them what I think. Uh, you know, I've heard that that uh, comment so far a few times, and it it wasn't like they just came in the room and they said you didn't have a good year. We had a real good conversation, talked about uh, a lot of things about the team, about my beliefs as a coach, and uh, you know, when we got into personal conversation about their season, uh, to a man, they both believed that you know they had a better year in them, and and I I agreed that I thought they had a, an average year last year, and there were certain areas in their game that I wanted them to improve in, and they were. They're great about it, mm -hmm. uh, and again, like players want to be held accountable, but they also want they want to know how you feel. Tweet from uh, David Quadrell G. Uh, what memory do you have playing against the Sedines when you were with the Leafs? Well, it was a long time ago. Uh, if I was, you know, when I did play against them, I would have been the one ch trying to chase them around and stop them from scoring. So, uh, you know, they were just great players back then. They still are today. They're Hall of Fame players. Uh, whenever you play against guys like that, you, you know, you never forget it really. I've, I've, I was fortunate enough over my career to play against a lot of players and a lot of good ones. It's a tweet that I forgot to get in at the top of the show and I don't want to go by it. It's from B Class. Uh, when you announced this morning that Brock Besser wasn't playing, there was a lot of reaction right. that I'm sure you anticipated. Right. So he just asked a simple question. We got a ton of these tweets. He's most civil about it. Uh, <laughs> why sit Brock Besser on opening night? 
You know, there's been a lot of hype on Brock. There's a lot of big expectations on him. Uh, it's twofold, really. I'm thinking about the team, and I'm thinking about development in Brock. And uh, I felt for the game against Edmonton, uh, we need to have a couple lines that were going to be effective against the McDavid line. And, uh, you know, he just happened to be the guy out. It's, there's 82 games in the season. It's a long season still. He's going to get plenty of opportunity to play. And I'm not worried. I've had a good conversation with Brock. I'm not worried about it at all. Louis. I think that's great development right there when you look at it from that regard. And to be able to sit out a guy, like you said, that came in, had a great training camp, it shows you that your team's deeper than what people probably expected. And the fact that, you know what, you're going to have to fight for every single minute you get on the ice in the National Hockey League. So it's a pretty solid message. It is. And it's, it's, it wasn't, I wasn't doing it just to send a message to Brock. It was just, you know what, I felt like it was the right thing to do for this game. And, uh, you know, Jake played, Brock didn't. And, you know, he's going to be fine. I mean, yeah. Like I said, Brock's going to have plenty of opportunity to see where he fits on our team. And he's a young guy trying to make his way into the league. Uh, but it's only one game. Travis, there's no shortage of people, including many of the, of the players that you played with on five different teams in your 14-year career, who have said, Travis Green was the last guy I thought who would ever become a coach. <laughs> I'd be yeah. one of those guys. You want to chime in on that, Louis? Yeah, you know, I mean, when, <laughs> you know, we're that funny, you know, joking, and all of a sudden the demeanor yeah. changes. I yeah. love it, though. You know what? Yeah. You've really, uh, you've really grasped this role and really ran with it. But why do you well, think people said that? Well, I was a happy-go-lucky guy when yeah. I played. Uh, you know, I'd like to think, you know, my teammates respected me, uh, and you want that as a player. You want to have the respect of your teammates. But I enjoyed playing. I enjoyed going to the rink, uh, being around my teammates. Uh, I, lo I love the game, I love playing, and, and you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with being yeah. a happy-go-lucky mm -hmm. guy, but when I played, I'd like to think that I played hard, especially, you know, the last half of my year. Uh, obviously, when I started coaching, it's a new career. Uh, you know, when I'm coaching, it's it's business, I'm working. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, I still like to have fun, I still like, you know, be happy when I'm away from the ring. You learned from some of the greats, Pat Quinn, one of them, Al Arbor as well, uh, but you played for Pat with the Leafs, and uh, this year you received the Pat Quinn Award from yeah. the BC Hockey Hall of Fame. It's an award that goes to someone who educates players. What did it mean to you to receive an award in Pat Quinn's name? Well, it was a huge honor. Uh, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to play for a lot of coaches over the years, and, uh, you know, Pat was a great coach. We all know that. Uh, he's a fantastic individual, but you know the special thing about Pat is he's as good a coach as he was. He's an amazing person off the ice. Uh, as a player, you always knew that he had your back. He wanted the best for his players, and that's something I'll never forget. And, I, and it's it's an award that really means something to me. You had a spectacular junior career. Um, after a 51 goal season in Spokane, the Islanders drafted you in the second round, 23rd overall in '89. <laughs> so you look wow. good there in the Chiefs uniform. And uh, then the picture that's most often associated uh, with your draft year. The mullet. <laughs> Looks like well, you were trying out for the traveling Yoggers there. Um, Louis, you, yeah. you can expand on this. Well, one of our former teammates, Shane Doan, texted me today. I told him we were having you on the show, and he says, you know, can you finally tell us exactly what product you use to get the <laughs> lid to look that good in warm-ups? Because I remember that flow as well. Yeah, it was, uh, it's a secret. I'll it's never just, let it never go. Gonna Maybe let it one day out. I'll <laughs> yeah. get a deal out of but, it. But uh, it was a combination of three or four products. <laughs> <laughs> you had to look good in the warm-up, right? For sure. All right, you celebrated 193 goals in the NHL, Travis, and a lot of them were basic celebrations, but uh, there was one that was quite different with Ziggy <laughs> Palfy. You guys are digging into the archives <laughs> here. When, uh, when you set him up for his 33rd goal yeah. and uh, with the Islanders. <laughs> he caught he, me off guard here. Okay, you watch it. I'm about to. <laughs> here, you, you describe what happens here. Oh, I'm, think, I'm just kind of going woo, celebrating, and he plants a big one on my lips. I haven't seen this for a while. I got to tell you, you yeah. took that, he handled that so well, though. You just laughed. You smiled up. Holy oh, jumping. Yeah. All right. Canuck said, Coach. You could probably get that off there anytime. <laughs> uh, Canuck said, Coach Travis Green is our guest on After Hours. When we come back, we'll touch on family, among other things, as we continue from Rogers Arena in Vancouver. Back with you as we continue with After Hours, Travis Green, who began his NHL coaching career tonight with a win, is our guest. And Travis, a tweet from Gary Sedin. What's it mean to you to be the second uh, BC-born head coach of the Canucks? By the way, do you know who the first was? No. Tom Rennie. Tom Rennie. Tom yeah, Rennie. I did know. From Cranbrook. Yeah. 
Well, I know Tom. What? I grew <laughs> okay. up actually. I uh, used to go to his clothing store that he used to own in Trail. But uh, no, it means a lot. It's a thin margin there. He used to say that he he did he'd buy like a pair of jeans and sell them, and then go get another pair. Yeah. And sell them. <laughs> I know. I remember buying them. <laughs> but uh, you know, when you have a goal in mind and you want to coach, and I want to coach the NHL, uh, I was never really thinking about where it would be. Uh, obviously, when I took the job with Utica. You know, I was with the organization, and things just fell into place that I got the job. Then, you know, but to have my first coaching job in in my home province is uh, makes it even more special for me. Louis, you know, Reiner, you were a player that was drafted as a high-end player, and right. one of the things you had to do was change your game, and you've yeah. talked about that. Has that helped you in your coaching, as far as you know, making sure that the players, as you talk about, play the right way? I think so. Uh, you know, it's helped me probably my coaching of understanding the game learning how to adapt, learning. I had to be a student of the game to play in the league, but also the makeup and the, uh, you know, the mental side of, of young players that are high draft picks. Uh, they're used to having things go their own way. They're used to play in, playing certain minutes of the game, uh, you know, maybe cheating a little bit to score goals. And the game's such a 200-foot game now. I think uh, you know, that part has helped me a little bit. There's lot, lots of things that go into coaching, but for me, my past experiences have, have definitely helped. Let's see if we can get that earpiece back in here because there's some audio coming up that uh, you got to oh, hear. No. Oh, no. Look at me yeah. here now. <laughs> yeah. Could you help me, Travis, here, maybe? <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, welcome to our world. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing we know about the Canucks organization. <laughs> Lisa, come in it. here and help Travis. Yeah. This is live TV, and we've got to get this fixed. We're, we're doing yeah. it on the fly okay. here. I like it. So, Travis, one thing we know about the, the Canuck organization is if you're right. going to be in it, uh, your social conscience is going to get a workout. There's the Canucks for Kids Fund, there's Canuck Place, which is the Children's Hospice, and That's there's right. the Canuck Autism Network. And you were on the uh, annual Canucks fishing trip, uh, autism fishing trip this year, yeah. and I'll let you explain why it meant so much to you. Well, first of all, the, the Canucks do, do a lot for charities, uh, and obviously this this has a special place in my heart because uh, it's for the Autism Network. Uh, you know, what the Canucks have done for, for autism is amazing to be part of it. Obviously, uh, you know, I have a son that's autistic, so this, this had a special place in my heart for sure. Well, two of the guests on the fishing trip were Lance Andre and his son Dylan, and yeah. uh, we have part of the compelling story that Lance told. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. I can still remember the fear and the heartbreak we experienced when we first received the diagnosis. As a parent, you can really never prepare yourself for a moment like that. The moment when your dreams for your child are shattered before your eyes. We got di Dylan's diagnosis and we didn't know where to turn. You go through the sadness, oh what am I going to do, and then the heartbreak. Through sports, my boys have developed many friendships, something that Dylan has never experienced. What were you thinking when uh, you listened to Lance talk about Dylan? Oh man, uh, lots. Uh, you know, it took me back to, you know, when we found out that Brody was autistic, and uh, you know, it, it's it. You can't really put it into into words what the feelings that you have when that happens to a child of yours, and uh, you know, it brought tears to my eyes listening to him. But uh, you know, autism awareness. It, it's huge and to be part of that and what the Canucks have done is uh, to bring autism out and people to talk about it and to help families that need services is really it's amazing. So then uh, final comment you have a particular understanding of the autism network how would you describe the importance of the services uh, made available to those who have children on the autism spectrum? Well it's you can't say enough there's because kids that have autism uh, you know they need to have services uh, it can improve the services and the more awareness that you have, the better. And the more money that's raised for people that need it, you know, all the better. Perfect. Travis, we're going to leave it there. Okay. Um, thanks for joining us. All right. Well, One game lot, into your NHL Thank career you and your 1-0. Travis Green was our guest on After Hours. And we'll continue from Rogers Arena in Vancouver in a moment. Back at Rogers Arena for our final segment, want to take a moment to congratulate a friend of many in Winnipeg, Jim Benzeluk, on his induction into the Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame tonight. Benny was a first-round draft pick by Minnesota in 1968. Ren Blair, GM, offered him $2,000 to sign. Benny drove a hard bargain, held out for $3,000. They settled at $2,500, whereupon 
Veterans Bill Goldsworthy and Moose Vasco made Benny take them out for Chinese food. The bill came to $250. Benny was aghast. He kept 500 of what was left, sent the rest home to Winnipeg, and there was your 1968 rookie dinner. Congratulations to Benny and family, and deepest sympathy to the family of Ray Turnbull. Ray passed away yesterday morning. He was a giant in curling, perhaps the game's greatest ambassador and teacher, and I'm proud to say a personal friend. Ray was 78, and he will be missed. Thanks for watching tonight. Good night from Vancouver.